In this section, we will talk about the popular machine learning model, random forest models. Previously, with the Begin approach, we were able to introduce some randomization to our dataset by using this bootstrapping approach. With the random forest, we will further extend this randomization to include our features. So with the random forest models, we will not only apply bootstrapping, but we will also select some random subset of our features. If two trees are given these joint features, then their predictions will be as independent as the data set itself was. And the power of the random forest comes from the fact that if different trees trained on different features in different data sets all agree on the same conclusion, then we can be very confident on these conclusions. This overall decreases the correlation between our trees as well. So previously with the, with the bagging method, we saw that we introduced some correlation coming from our bootstrapping approach. Here with the increased randomization on our features, we also even reduce our correlation further here. But alternatively, this will increase the instability of the overall estimator. We also have an extra hyperparameter here, just like the regular parameters maximum depth of the tree and the size of the random subset that we use, we'll, we will also have another parameter here that decides the number of features. And just like any other hyperparameter, we will also optimize it using a validation set or out of whack error. Usually a good place to start for a classification problem is the square root of the number of features for this parameter. For regression, we usually go with the half of the total number of features. Let's have an example here. In this example, we will look at this MNIST data set. This data set is made of some uh, grayscale pictures of handwritten digits. And this is a well-known computer vision data set. And this is a benchmark data set. And people try to correctly classify these handwritten digits to the correct digit. So it can go from 0 to 9. Let's look at this data. Here we just have four pictures. These are handwritten. So we see a 5, we see 0, 4, and 1 here. And when we apply random forest model on this data, what happens is that each of our trees will get a random uh, subset of these features. So, it, so we can assume that these are our features, these pixels that we have. So in this case, we can kind of visualize this as each of the tree uh, having a subset of these features. So for example, a tree will see these pixels. We also have a notebook on this. We will go through this notebook afterwards. In this exercise, we are specifically comparing a random forest model with a simple back model, and we are looking at the overfitting problem one more time. Here we are also showing our results on the right-hand side here. So we are plotting our test accuracy versus the number of predictors in each of these models. We have a quite interesting result here. When we look at the test accuracy, it usually goes up with the increased number of predictors for both of the models. But as you see, the random forest starts quite slow compared to the simple bagged model here. But after a while, there's a point where the random forest catches on the simple bagged model and, and even uh, passes that model. So it looks like around this point. So with the random forest models, we may need more trees. But overall, as we keep adding more trees, we usually get a higher performance with that. Let's also talk about the scikit-learn interface for random forest classifiers. It is really easy to import. You just import this function. And the parameters are very similar to what we've seen before. This time, I will just point out these two parameters. So non number of estimators is 100 by default with this algorithm. And the max features is a new parameter that we use. Uh, it is by default auto, which uses the square root of our number of total features here. Let's look at our notebook together. In this notebook, we are going to use the MNIST dataset. So let's import this MXNet Gluon library here first to get this dataset. Here I'm getting the dataset in terms of training and test here. Then I do a little bit of extra work here. For example, I reshape the data to this because the data itself is 28 by 28 pictures. So I just flatten them here. Then I also normalize them by dividing it by the 255 here, so that I have values between 0 and 1. After that, I just use this visualization to show you what type of data that we are dealing with. 
over here this is our sample digits five zero four one and just like i mentioned in the slides we are selecting some subsets of these for our decision trees in our random forest models so over here uh, i just used a simple example in which we just consider for example a single decision tree here which we will see these features for these pictures when we compare this with a simple backed model in those models every single decision tree will consider all the features so it means that for those they will see all these pixels but for the random forest model each single decision tree will see less number of pixels so let's first get our begging model we will just use the random force classifier function here, but we will just pass this max features non parameter here. This time it will consider all the features and it will just act like a simple begging model here. So let's do that. I'm going to import my random force classifier and uh, and I have a for loop here where I change my number of estimators with that. And I pass my max features non parameter here, which makes this act like a begging model at this point. And my, my simple begging model is created like this. Then I will fit this with my training data and I will receive the uh, prediction scores from the test data like this. Then for each of these, I'm also going to print my score. Then I will also append my score to this simple back test list that I defined at the beginning. So this will run. After we run this, it also looks like this the result. We will get to our random forest model here. With this again, I'm just going to go from uh, all the way from 1 tree to 12 trees. With this, I'm just going to change the max features parameters to square root. And it's just going to get this model. Then I will again fit it on my training data. Then I will get my predictions from the test data like this. Similar to before, I will also keep this in, inside a list. Then I will just append it. And at the end, after this training, I will also plot my result. Once you run this, you will also realize that your random forest code runs much faster than your simple begging model here. This is coming from the fact that this uses all the features in the decision trees. And this one just uses the square root of all the features. So this makes a huge impact in, to, in terms of the speed of this algorithm. So let's scroll down. Here we are comparing these two models against each other. And just like we mentioned, in the uh, slides, this is the point where the random forest catches up on the simple backed model and also passes that afterwards. Let's talk about one more advantage of random forest models. As we've seen before, with the random forest models, we use a random subset of the features. And with that, we were able to decorrelate our trees and also reduce overfitting. But there is another important big benefit. It is the efficiency. With these models, our trees are only seeing a fraction of the features, and with that, our training time is usually a fraction of the time. If you go and check our last notebook, we will see that our back model took about 12 minutes for training, whereas our random forest model took only 25 seconds. So this is a huge difference. Let's also mention some different implementations of this random forest model. We can change the way that we use our features for example, as we first learned this model, we said that we are using a subset of the features for each tree, but we can go one more step and let each node this time select a random subset of the features. And in fact, this is the implementation that you will encounter in SKLearn library. Or we can combine extra trees with this algorithm for further decorrelation. As another different approach, we could also change the way that we do our splits. For example, the perfect random tree ensembles per trees, they do splits differently. They randomly choose two points of different classes and they try to correctly classify them. There are many more different implementations. You can check out this section 431 from our textbook. Let's also talk about some results involving random forest models. People have done some meta-analysis of machine learning algorithms and random forest models often come out at or tight for the top for those. And we also give a study here that looked at 179 different machine learning models against 121 different data sets. And here we have a plot for that. In this study, they found out that for the fragment ring, the random forest model is at the top. 
And also for the average accuracy, when we look at all the algorithms, we see the random forest model at the top. In these type of studies, you may also see random forest model not being at the top, but you will sometimes see that it's a contender for the top. But you may see another model at the top. Most of the time, that's going to be the boosting method. And we will talk about that in our lecture five.